this is the Vericon unit that uh, fits into two filter tray slots in an MB14 ARRI mat box. Uh, the unit was developed by Araflex after they purchased the Lightflex unit, which was a huge unit that was bolted onto the front of uh, a lens, you almost needed construction to be able to fit it on. And once Araflex bought the Lightflex, they decided to uh, turn it into something that was a little bit more user friendly and developed it as this unit that would literally fit into a mat box. So how does this unit work? Well, in this housing on top, there is a, a bulb. The bulb passes light down through the unit and it passes through a shutter, which is controlled by the dial on the side here. Now, what that allows you to do is vary the intensity across the filter uh, without changing color temperature. Obviously, if we were, were dialing intensity up and down and changing voltage, then there would be a color temperature change as you did that. So the blacks would, would take on a color cast as you change the voltage up and down. And if you're looking at a properly calibrated monitor, um, if you set the monitor up to uh, color bars and grayscale, and then dial this up and down, you can actually see exactly how much shadow detail you're getting in those shadow areas. Now, obviously, the, the, the comment is, well, why not just bring up the master blacks or the or the pedestal in um, in color grading? And yeah, you can do that, but there's a price you pay, and the price you pay is increased noise. The advantage of this system is that you're telling the circuitry that there is actually light in the shadow areas. So when you dial this up, you're not actually increasing the noise level. You're putting light into the into the um, image, and you're gaining more shadow detail. Uh, without the without the cost of, of noise. So uh, that's the advantage. The other advantage is that you can, in the back here, there's a little filter tray that you can put filters in. So you can slide that into the back of the unit right in here like this. And then you can color that light to whatever you want. Again, it's something you can do in post-production. So that's really not something that's that's real necessary at the moment. But the, the actual um, uh, changing of the, of the amount of shadow detail is a really valuable uh, tool. Now, of course, there are a few things to keep in mind when uh, using the Vericon. Obviously, you're going to milk out the blacks when you, when you bring, the, uh, bring the level up uh, to, to bring your shadow detail in. Uh, so you are going to have to pull them back down in post-production if that's not a look you're after. If you're going for a low contrast look and you want the blacks up a little bit higher, then uh, yeah, that's fine, you can, you can use it. Uh, but generally, if you're just going for shadow detail, you'll bring the blacks up, and then you'll have to pull them back down to the saturation level you want in post, in the color grade, uh, but you'll still hold on to the shadow detail. Instead of going the other way where you, you're struggling to get enough light into the shadows, you're pulling detail out, bringing up the noise level. So the advantage, obviously, is that you're bringing the, bringing the shadow areas down and if there is any noise in the shadow areas, you're decreasing it rather than increasing it. The other advantage of this is that if you're going for uh, what everyone lovingly refers to as a film look, um, you can achieve that with the Vericon. It does give you a nice uh, softness in the, in the blacks uh, that you can't get other than by manipulating the, the, uh, the, the controls in the camera or again, manipulating it in post-production. Uh, I actually like to do it in camera, so I've got control over it on the set and I can see what I'm, what I'm getting when I'm shooting. But in terms of digital cinematography, it does give you a really nice look in the blacks um, and, and gives overall uh, a little bit more of a filmic look rather than, than the uh, hard edge that you normally associate with uh, digital cinematography these days. Now, the, the question is, okay, it works great on film, but is it necessary on HD? Well, I've done a lot of testing on HD. And I've used this unit ever since it was built, and I think my unit is actually 0001. Um, so I've used it for quite a while, and I was one of the few guys using it on TV, which I couldn't really understand because TV is the perfect place to use it. Um, but I did a lot of testing uh, in the early days on, on the early generation HD cameras uh, in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, and the results were spectacular. And I've used it on the new generation cameras. Uh, and in actual fact, we just finished using it on a shoot in Jerez, Spain, where we used the Alexa and the Canon 5D. 
and on both cameras the light flex unit worked fantastically well. Uh, it gave me, uh, in areas where we, we couldn't put fill light, it allowed me to basically dial the fill light in, uh, dial it up and down, get the shadow detail I wanted uh, without having to put up lights in a dangerous situation or go to the added uh, time uh, cost of, of uh, lighting, a, lighting a big uh, big area. So that's the light flex. Um, if anyone's got any questions, shoot them off to me, happy to answer them. But yeah, uh, it works fantastically well on film. And in my opinion, it works equally well on, on HD or any form of digital uh, cinematography.